welcome <clears throat> let us talk about uh, uh, you know we could actually base theorem and uh, one of the very important aspects of classification so make base classifier actually contributed by the scientist thomas base in 17 uh, you know 61 and we just start the visualization of like this for example we talk about classification of two categories of uh, very small insects. One is called grasshoppers and another is caterpillars. And if you take a look, they have a very specific, if you if you take a look at uh, this kind of insects, you have a certain attributes to decide. And you chose that abdomen length versus antenna length. If you plot them, you see that in a two-dimensional plane, they have a very specific range, you know, they have a very specific set of values for abdomen length versus antenna length. So classifying examples, so remember this example we already talked about. So what happens with lots of data, what we can do, we can build a histogram and that can tell us about the frequency of, you know, particularly antenna length and particularly abdomen length. We understand the two different classes of insects having a different frequency of distribution. So frequency of distribution we can use histogram to summarize the distribution is a normal you see the normal distribution actually is like l-shape this is a normal distribution what does it mean this normal distribution it means that whatever we see in in this catty bead and the grasshoppers they are actually having a natural distribution of their abdomen length versus you know antenna length so talking from this we we want to classify an insect we have found and now its antennas are three units long how can we classify it it's a very interesting question we can ask ourselves we give the distribution of antenna length and probable that our insect is a grasshopper or a caterpillar we don't know but it's a three unit long so what we do we calculate this is an insect we are talking about and this insect's antenna length is 3 and we need to find out whether it is a grasshopper or a caterpillar. So if you take a look at the distribution, we have distributions already. So what we calculate is probability of class. Our class is either grasshopper or caterpillar. Given that we have observed the distribution. So what we do, it's a probability understanding from the distribution to say whether it is a caterpillar or a grasshopper. So, naive based classifier is a probabilistic framework for classification problem. Often appropriate because the world is noisy, because probability is a very important, you know, mathematical uh, parameters which we can use to do a lot of problem solving. So, is predicting who will win a baseball game probabilistic in nature? Kind of, yes. Before getting the heart of the matter, we'll go over some probability and discuss a little bit about the fundamental building blocks of this naive based classifier. The first thing is a discrete random variable. A is a Boolean valued random variable if A denotes an event and there is some degree of uncertainty as to whether A occurs. So a discrete random variable, example A, the next patient you examine is suffering from inhalational anthrax, can be another can be another you know uh, random uh, variations the next patient you examine has a cough the next patient you know there is an active terrorist cell in your city so this is a kind of randomness we have and what is the probability we say we write actually p of a p of a what we say is the fraction of possible worlds in which a is true that means we are talking about if, if it's a possibility that is true, that is, that is the probability we are calculating. We could, we could at this point spend, you know, we can discuss, keep discussing, but we won't do that. So how do we visualize it? That's a space, world in which A is true and world in which A is false. You have two different spaces, you see. And then event space for all possible, its area is one. So P of A, area of, P of A is, we are talking about this radish oval. That is an area where A is true. So the axioms of probability, it can be either greater than zero or less than equal to one. P of true is one, P of false is zero. And you can understand A or B if we say, we have actually, it's a commutative formulation. We say P of A, probability of A plus probability of B 
minus probability of A and B. So what happens, this is A or B and this is A and B. So what we see is if whatever is the truth that we have, we add them and then subtract. So what we get, an area on gate is smaller than zero, you know, it's a very small one. Interpreting axioms, if it is happening like this, so the area of A won't get bigger than one. So either it is zero or one. That's the maximum value that we have. And this is what we see in terms of, you know, intersections, the common A and B, and we have a certain area uh, which is, you know, outside this region. And we can see this is A or B because you are actually combining A, whatever the truth for A and whatever the truth for B combined together. And simple addition and subtraction how it looks like this so another important theorem that we have is we can actually always say that p of a is greater than equal to zero less than equal to one that's the maximum value p of true is one p of false is zero so from this we can say actually p of a is p of a and b plus p of a and not b because it's like you know you understand this two area and a and not b we are talking about however a is true and b is false you can understand that region plus which is combined with a and b that means if i say p of a what is p of a p of a this part a and b is this so this region is a and b and this part is a and not b if you actually take as a, a take a um, uh, conjunction of not b means we are talking about this part so A means this plus this, that's what actually the formulation is. All right, so conditional probability is another probability which is coming into the discussion is the fraction of word in which B is true that also have A true. When A, a and B, the fraction of words in which B is true and that also have A is true, that means we are talking about the region which is between F and H which is common. You can see H have a headache and C coming down with flu so what happens what is the probability of h we are talking about headache 1 over 10 yeah and uh, whatever whatever what is the probability of uh, flu is 1 over 40 for example so what we say is it's actually you can understand that we are talking about now conditional probability that having a headache and however you see fraction of the world in which b is true that means you are talking about whoever is having flu and also have a headache is 1 over 2. So headaches are rare and flu is rare but if you are com coming down with flu there is a 50-50 chance you will have a headache. Yeah. So the point is that how do we calculate this conditional probability we are going to see that also. So for example conditional probability of fraction of you see fraction of flu infected world in which you have a headache. That's what you say fraction of flu fraction of this flu infected world or you have a headache is what you do number of your counting worlds with flu and headache how many over worlds with flu so it's actually area of h and f region plus area of h and f region is this the area and hfn region that means it's actually you can see you can easily calculate that h is have a headache coming down with flu so probability of h and f you can understand probability of h and f and probability of f is this so this is actually you can understand this is half of it so p of conditional probability of fraction of you can understand we are talking about fraction of flu infected world in which you have a headache is one over two you see it is half of f one by two so that's how actually we calculate. So what we do actually in the calculation of conditional probability, we find that how many has headache and flu, the number divided by how many has actually flu. As, as simple as that, when we look at area, we look at this point. So definition of conditional probability, what we understand now, that conditional probability AB is the probability of A and B over probability of B. And currently the chain rule, we sometimes say that P, A and B is this, so chain rule sometimes we apply to simplify because that means probability of A and B I can replace this equation with probability of AB over probability of B. We multiply these two probability. That means we have conditional probability. This is a conditional probability multiplied by the probability of B. That's how actually mathematically we can implement. 
So probabilistic inference we see now again, one day you wake up with a headache, you think drug 50% of the flu are associated with a headache, 50 chance. Is this reasoning good? Yes. You can see now what happens, Come having a headache and then you do the calculation like this, having a headache, 1 over 10, 1 over 40 and 1 over 2. So probability of F and H, you are actually multiplying the conditional probability of having flu and headache multiplied. So 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 40, 1 over 80. So what you do now? So what you are calculating the conditional probability. Conditional probability in this case is the probability over this and this is 1 over 80 divided by 1 over 10. 1 over 10 is given is 1 over 8. So probabilistic inference is very, very powerful and we are going to find out some classes based on probability. So what we just did, we did actually this calculation of conditional probability and we see this conditional probability of B over A is actually probability of A and B, that means the commonplace over probability of A is equal to, we can chain rule, we can apply that probability, conditional probability of AB multiplied by probability of B over probability of A. And this rule actually is called Bayes rule. Bayes rule is helping us to find conditional probability. All right, so some of the terminology, the prior probability, prior probability is probability assuming no specific information. That means, thus we had, we refer to P of A is the prior probability of A. We would not say this is actually prior probability of A occurring, but posterior, there are two probabilities. Prior probability means something happening before and posterior probability is probability given that we know something. Probability assuming no, that means I don't know anything, but it is a kind of prior probability and posterior probability, I know something. So we would say that P of A is a posterior probability of A given that C occurs. All right, so example of Bayes theorem, and doctor knows this, these are examples we have already seen. And if patients, uh, for example, you see a doctor knows the meningitis causes stiff neck 50% of the time. That means neck gets stiff 50% time. Prior probability of any patient having this meningitis is 1 over 50,000. That is a prior probability without any information. We guess this number. Possibly out of 50,000, one may have this. And prior probability of any patient having stiff neck, we have two issues. One is that meningitis and stiff neck. So we are looking at two prior probability. And now I need to find out that what is the probability someone has you know, meningitis and stiff neck. So meningitis over stiff neck, we actually have multiply as you know, we multiply the stiff neck over meningitis. This is a conditional probability. As you see, conditional probability, we say prior probability of any patient having a stiff neck is one over 20. It's a 50% of the time. We say a doctor knows that meningitis causes that is actually conditional probability. So 50% times so 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by your probability of meningitis is here over probability of uh, patient having a stiff neck. You get this value. So this is actually you are measuring what is the probability that some patient may have both meningitis and stiff neck. So this is another example of uh, BT which happens to be like this, we can actually measure. So ultimately what is happening is you are actually doing the calculation based on conditional probability. I just skip this part. Uh, Bayesian diagnosis is like this, so we skip this part also, just having a probability case. You can understand the buzzword and the meaning in our example. There is a true state priors, conditional probability, posterior probability. So. What is happening? That's a decision theory comes into the picture. So what Bayes theorem is at all? Why Bayes theorem at all is this? We are actually calculating conditional probability based on conditional probability multiplied by the prior probability. We, we have prior probability of P of C and prior probability of A. So this is very important. Why? Because we actually take a decision based on conditional probability, applying Bayes theorem. So crime scene analysis, analogy is another thing, A is a crime scene, C is a person who may have committed the crime. So you look at P, C of A, look at the scene, who did it, P of C, who had a motive, this is a profiler, and P, A of C could have done it, you know. So that's kind of analogy we draw and we stop here, We our next discussion we elaborate more applying Bayes uh, theorem.